Saskatchewan Indian Indigenous Social Work Program is what it's called in that. And I teach on the average about three classes per semester in that. They run from September to December and then from January to April and then April to, to uh, August and that. The age groups are uh, in the social work program, the average anywhere from uh, 19 to, I've had some students in their uh, 50s and late, uh, late 50s and that, so, and uh, yeah, and they're, they're, they're my, their audience and that as well too and that. The programs that I teach includes a cultural component. And that means, you know, like, uh, like say, for instance, if I uh, if I do the ISW 200 social work program, I uh, that entails uh, uh, teaching them uh, the importance of uh, using uh, elders and ceremonies and uh, First Nations perspective, I guess, in in the social work field. I know that many of our students. I do go out in there, need to really understand uh, the, uh, the, their own cultures in that. The, uh, their target would be the, uh, the, uh, the young mothers in that, that, uh, that they'll be involved with young mothers, young, young dads in that, so in the social work field. Again, uh, when they first come to us here, they, it's, it's, it's very hard for them to, uh, to grasp their, even their own cultures where they've come from and that. So when we, uh, when they come to us here, they uh, pretty well, uh, we give them a, 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 we give them access to, to elders and uh, access to elders and, you know, the ceremonies that, uh, that are, uh, that we include here at the, at the university, that being the uh, pipe ceremonies, the, uh, the smudging, the circles, uh, the teachings, and the feasts, feasts are very important as well, too, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to include in the uh, curriculum that we, uh, that we use because at, at some point in time, if they're going to be social workers, they're going to have to pass that knowledge on to, their, uh, to those that don't know, to those that will be asking the, uh, the, uh, the students when, once they're out there, how do I do? How do I begin a ceremony? And as they'll be asked those questions. I mean, when I go, when I uh, when I step back into my own my own uh, uh, when I first started uh, taking classes at this university here, these were some of the questions that I asked. Like, what am I going to do when I'm when I do have my degree in that? How am I going to present myself in that? Again, when I working with our people. That was my main goal is, is to, to, to come to university and that and uh, eventually go back home and, uh, and assist in, uh, in all the program that's out there and that we know that uh, a lot of the programs just do not work at all and that some of the some of the issues that they had 20 years ago they're still they're still there like, you know so we have to find different ways and teach our students to think outside the box and that, and, uh, and, and that's, you know, uh, going back to their own histories and that, to their own, uh, to their own culture and that, so. Like I said, just stepping back into my time when I went, when in my undergrad, like coming, like what were my objectives in that, coming to, to, why, why was I coming to, to university in that? Again, I, uh, Absolutely, I wanted to get my education in that and know the uh, mainstream, uh, the mainstream policies that are out there in that, and I'm trying to understand them. Because, like I said, we've never First Nations people have never had a say in policy at all throughout history. And uh, and for me, I guess you know I had to try and understand like you know where I came from in that, and uh, how can I make change in that? You know, we know that policy and. You know, the, the, you know, they're going to be hard to change in that for our people in that age. So, 
in uh, just making them making them aware of you know you know to, you have to work with the system and that and uh, and uh, get into their uh, get into the boards and that's the way I did it was when I uh, when I when I did my when I completed my masters and that I went and worked for the health field and that and I uh, and uh, they had to be taught like, as a survivor as well too I guess. Like many of our people are, are, are descendants or survivors of the residential schools and that. And, uh, and uh, I'm finding now that, you know, that going out into the field, many of the, uh, the uh, many of the uh, different agencies that I uh, uh, sit with and that do not understand what uh, residential schools and what they did to our people in that, and uh, so that's one part of my education. What ed me educating is educating the uh, mainstream as well too. I've done uh, many uh, uh, teachings with the uh, with the doctors, the nurses, researchers on how the uh, how these residential schools and the 60 scoops really affected our people. So, so these are things that I, uh, I uh, when I teach my class, when I teach my students and that, I bring that to light in that, so the importance of, uh, of understanding the past and going back there and, and really uh, uh, hearing, you know, the, uh, the, the stories and that from the survivors and that. So that in itself, you know, when I when I uh, when I do present, I ask my audience. Many, I've had over 200, uh, well over 100. My uh, audiences, I ask them two things. I ask, has anybody here taken residential school uh, history in their in their curriculum while they went to uh, while they went to university and through their high school and that? And rarely a hand goes up. So there's that teaching that we have to do yet. Teaching the, uh, I know I've, uh, like I said, I've taught it to many. I've, I've done my, my uh, story in that, my, as a teaching to many doctors in that, and, and uh, after hearing the story, many of them say we didn't realize this is what happened to, to you people in that. Area. For them to understand, really understand, I guess you know. And again, they don't. You know, I've I've been in mainstream. I've I've I've, uh, I've taught my story at the. Uh, I've told my story at the University of Saskatchewan. That many uh, many of the different agencies, like the doctors, the new doctors, the uh, uh, like I said, researchers, and um, for them to to come to me after the fact, like after I've told my story. And tell me, like Gilbert, now I understand. Now I can understand why, why our people, the, you know, the way things are out there in, in uh, society, and that why you know our people are still, you know, why we're why we're still in the background. We're we're the poorest people in this country, and and nothing is going to change until you know we we educate mainstream and say, look. No, we want a part. We want to be a part of change, and for them to to come to me and say, you know, Gilbert, you know, telling your story, and and uh, now I understand. So maybe that, you know, that that's a start to at least uh, uh, having you know um, information sessions or or just or just uh, meeting with them and that. Having input, having our input in, in making change. When I uh, do the program here, and that I again, I the, uh, the classes teaching them here. I bring in, uh, I bring in elders. I bring in uh, alumni, those that are currently out there, and that, and, and what they're, uh, how they're uh, uh, working with. Mainstream agencies and that, and uh, having them explain to my students, this is what you're going to encounter when you're out there.
So I, with that, I ask my, I tell my students, and uh, what are you going to do? And I and I put them in groups. I, I have them do a, a presentation. What are you going to do to to change, like say homelessness, for one thing? Or what are you going to do with uh, reconciliation? You know, how are you going to approach uh, your your supervisors once once you're out in the field? We know that you know all, all um, different uh, agencies are run by 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 policy and that so. What can you do to change policy in that in, in a positive way, not to point fingers, but to do it to do it respectfully in that, and by using, you know, uh, uh, using your own uh, uh, knowledge, having heard from the elders, uh, having you know, sat with uh, sat with them and asked them, like, because again we cannot forget the uh, the knowledge of the elders. Uh, they they have just as much. Uh, Knowledge as as those that have those uh, the, the mainstream uh, universities and that and that is why you know that is why this is happening now today and that you know like, like they want to know that information and that eh? and maybe that's why this is happening and that so. to me that that was asked again and at, at, at you know I'm I'm up there now I'm a grandfather and I'm I've uh, taught many uh, students in that, and now, for me, being a survivor of the residential schools in the '60s, scooping that, and and uh, and uh, looking, looking at you know the way our people are still living in that. When I, um, the way I look at it is re is reconciliation. I, uh, I go out there, like I said, I do my presentation. And in that presentation, I tell them, I, I, I ask, you know, very uh, uh, questions where they feel uncomfortable. But I do have to ask them, but I say it in a respectful way. And to me, like I said, reconciliation is that, like asking the tough questions. Because if you don't, you know, they'll, they'll take it as, you know, things are still okay and that, you know. And, uh, and uh, governments will say, you know, like nothing is, you know. Nothing is wrong if if if, the, if, the, if it's not being said or bought up, or then you know we'll just continue with the status quo. And that so to me, like I said, reconciliation. The next ten years, having having gone out there already in that and ha teaching my students in that and uh, and seeing them succeed. Seeing them uh, uh, bring out the issues, like I said, changing policy and that, bring out issues and that that, that are currently that are currently uh, really uh, uh, still affecting our people in a negative way. Having them, you know, sitting on boards and that, changing things and that, and, and including our 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 uh, culture and our elders in agencies out there and that and uh, you know, having their input into into uh, the agency that they're involved in. And for reconciliation, like I said, I won't be around you know, to see it to see it fully implemented. At least now we're talking about it. Yes, we've taken some some blows like, you know, like for instance, you know, the court cases that are out there, uh, the murdered and missing women that are out, you know, and all those, you know, like uh, if you're going to attain reconciliation, how are you, how are you going to, you know, bring that to the forefront and that? And, and they're doing that now. So, in ten years, my hope is that you know, with with my grandchildren, you know, uh, I know some of them are, some of them have started post secondary already, and that is for them to take this on and forward and say, look, you know, uh, we've we've uh, we've come from a dark place. In Canada's history, uh, residential and uh, the scoop, and uh, now we're talking about it. Reconciliation. We're talking about it now, but now let's go to the next level and, and find those solutions. Have us, have us involved, because quite frankly, I'm, I too, I watch the news. I watch the news, and I, I see different people coming to Canada. 
you know, as from, uh, from dark places where they're you know, fleeing from countries where they're where they're being uh, uh, persecuted. And, and uh, but where does that where does that put the First Nations people in that? They so uh, you know, we want to be a part of the solutions. We want to say, you know, have give us a say as to what you know what uh, what's currently happening out there. And, and so I I fear for my my grandchildren, but I want to make them aware that this is currently these are the things that are happening. You have to be aware of that and and try and make things you know try and make life better than that for for everybody in that. I've started this process already, the reconciliation. I, I, I work with the city of Saskatoon and I sit with their survivors. Uh, uh, they have uh, uh, survivors that, uh, that they call in and I'm one of them. The OTC is, is starting to, uh, they're, they want a board of, of survivors and that to bring up issues like I just talked about and that, to, to be aware of and that. So I've been asked to do that. I also sit in a, um, uh, a reconciliation committee that just started in the, in the city of Warman, Martinsville, Osler, Delmany, uh, and these are rural communities in that, eh? like out of Saskatoon, and uh, one Air First Nation in that. For me to come there and talk about, you know, my my uh, my involvement in rec reconciliation, what what do I, what can I see change in that? So being involved. Being involved, having a say in that. If we, if if you really want to make change in that, you want to hear our voices in that. And for me to, to do that on behalf of, of my people. We also started one in the north uh, east, portion of, uh, of Saskatchewan. They haven't started it there yet, but uh, Yellowcoal invited the town of Calhoun, Rose Valley, Porcupine and uh, local RMs to come in and sit and talk about reconciliation. So having that involvement and taking it forward, having them under, really understand now, you know, this is, we're not uh, tax grabbers that you say we are, you know what I mean? Like, make them understand, like, this is how we get our monies and that, and, you know, we, we pay taxes just like anybody in that. And so, you know, to, to get that... Uh, get that message out there in that age. So, so if I had if I had resources in that, you know, if I could, you know, for me to, because many times I go on my own to these places in that day, but I do it, I do it for the sake of making change, good positive change with the involvement of our people. In that.